Hello, been getting a lot of questions about have I done this or have I done that? So two things I'd like to point out to you. First of all, if you use this search channel section here, you'll be able to find a list of all things that I've done very quickly. And also if you click through the playlist, you'll actually see all the areas and subjects that I've covered there. Now the third place you can actually look for information, probably the most concise is this blogger account here, where it says list of my tutorials. And if you click on that, you get a whole page just devoted to every single thing I've done, broken into three sections, literature, poetry, and then language. Um, um, on top of that, if you're actually looking for the notes, which some people have requested, or if you go to the Facebook page over there, you'll find I'm going to add them all on to the notes section there. And while you're on the Facebook page, if you add and share, uh, sorry, like and share, that would be very much appreciated. Um, yeah, on to the video. Moving on then to Case History Allison, a head injury. Really interesting poem, really sad poem. Uh, looking at the structure first of all then, we've got the title. It sets up for the tone and the mood straight away. We're told that this is a case history, so this is some kind of medical term, or at least we know this person is a patient. Whether they're a full-time patient or not, we don't know. But um, obviously they're, they're in need of care, and obviously we're told why, because it's a head injury. Now the use of brackets here is really important, because obviously that shows us some kind of notes being taken about this person. And the fact that it's only her first name referenced here is also interesting because it kind of gives her a very small world she can be referred to simply as Allison because no one um, they, sorry no one else around would have had that name so maybe in the hospital she's in there's only a couple of hundred people and she's the only Allison uh, but obviously in the wider world you couldn't just refer to her as Allison because you know there's hundreds of Allisons you'd be like Allison who um, moreover also actually what it could also be a reference to is that sometimes when uh, psychologists are actually studying uh, memory loss and, and certain cases cases they don't actually give the person uh, the full name to protect their privacy so this could also be a reference to that so you've got two two bits there. It's quite a lot for a for a title got loads of things to pick up there and obviously it sets up the tone of the mood this is going to be quite distant quite um um how can I put it? Quite distant and quite formal in everything that kind of goes past. There's no kind of really, really deep um, pathos that comes through here. And even though we have a line like here towards the end, um, poor clever girl, and even though we have a line like here towards the end, um, poor clever girl, it's kind of more the, the, the point of the oxymoron is actually, and we'll come to it when we look at language, the point of the oxymoron is actually more powerful there than the, um, than the actual sentiment of being the poor girl in the exclamation mark. The fact that she, um, it's the change that we want to pick up on here or that's being forced upon us here rather than the sadness of the situation okay so back up to the structure then we've also got a start here with medical notes we've got the part again this part here in um brackets which is really important because again it just shows us that this is someone's medical notes which makes the rest of the poem all the more sad because then we're looking at the rest of the poem as some kind of confession in an interview or something that you know the person's saying so we can imagine that the interview with the doctor you know said Alison how do you feel about this and she hands over the photograph and then Alison looks at the photograph and then they've made the note she looks at the photograph and then records everything that she she says and obviously that that's quite it's quite sad um, we've got the third and first person perspectives uh, obviously she refers to herself as I and she also refers to herself as she. Uh, she and, and it's really interesting that she's got the perspective of the difference in herself because she knows how different it is like having her memory, sorry, before the accident or the injury and after the injury. So obviously she feels even to herself like a very different person. And um, that's, that's, that gives us a really interesting dramatic, uh, dramatic monologue because she's talking obviously about herself, but then it sounds like it's two people, you know, that are having a voice in some way, but it's not. It's just older Alison reminiscing on, on younger Alison. Um, so that's that's um, that 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 kind of conf obviously confessional um, aspect of a dramatic monologue really comes to the fore there. Uh, with the stanzas, we've got tersets. They're three lines each, and it's really interesting that they're kind of short, long, short. What well, could be a reflection on the way her memory is actually kind of working. You know, sometimes she has to stop, and the enjoyment helps that as well. Sometimes she has to stop. Um, maybe to recollect something or to, to pause and actually try and think and remember something it's not very free flowing it's you know very a lot uh, broken up uh, and we get that feeling even moving in from stanza to stanza as we do here from knee and then to like obviously again that that enjoyment there could be actually creating a big pause for us you know just while she kind of pulls in the memories because obviously she's got this memory problem and you've got the really um, kind of clearer connotation if you want to take it obviously the two kind of memories that people have the short term and the long term 
term again could be uh, represented sorry in the lines so what is this poem about well obviously it's about memory and it's about the power of memories and obviously this woman here with the problem is looking back at herself when she was younger and obviously it kind of fills her with a longing fills her with a sadness etc and it gives us the idea then on to identity about you know who we are if we don't have a memories i mean if we don't remember anything we've done are we a person have we actually done anything and the idea of who she is is is, is really important because she looks at her there and she kind of looks at all the hope and happiness that she could have had and then she looks at herself here and she says oh, i who need reminding every morning so maybe she doesn't know who she is and she has to see this picture to actually get an idea of who she who she is and, and remember it um, and obviously the sense that we get of um, regret in terms of um the life she 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 could could or could or should have uh, should have is a bit harsh harsh actually could have had here we she says you know she looks at herself and she says oh poor clever girl i mean that's really interesting because obviously she knows she had so much potential etc but then you know she didn't know a what was in store for her and b she didn't know that she was going to end up here or because of her um damaged brain and that's really one of the few times she actually refers to something there as my everything else is you know the other girls or etc 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 but here we've actually got my, uh, the reference to my damaged brain and that gives import, uh, real importance because she does reference another part of her body of this um, here but you know she talks about it in terms of the girl's um, leg and then she so the girl's knee and then she actually refers to herself we'll come to it again a little more um, succinctly in, in language but now when she references it here she says it lugs me up the stairs but the ownership she she has there is of my damaged brain you know again shows how central this is to her identity her life and and obviously who, who she is now um and we also get the sense obviously of uh, i think just to kind of touch the point there obviously what what um what 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 she could have been and that's summed up really sadly um as she 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 mentions that i know something that she doesn't i am her future and again you know you just probably wouldn't be expecting obviously the girl in the picture wasn't expecting to be a person that can barely remember herself in future life so there's lots of things to actually pick up there in in terms of um, meanings and themes uh, okay so images that we have um one of probably the simplest ones obviously the brain and um, the idea of the brain damage that the girl has and obviously again not only the actual damage itself which is referred to here but also the um effect that it has on her there um, we also have the knee and the movement and contrast and that's a really nice image because we're actually seeing the physical ability as well as the mental ability or memory ability she had the physical ability before she is used in a simile here to actually just mention how powerful are the um autocratic it's kind of like ruling um you know it doesn't you know it, it doesn't uh, you know it does what it wants to do you know it's in control and in command it does what it wants to do like um, a famous artist's um, pictures of dancers you know so it's kind of got that poise you know it's almost something that you could have pictured and captured and you know it was worth looking at um and it's you know had this great poise you know it could really hold itself etc so you've got the knee on one in one sense like that and then you've got the contrast um with the way it now just lugs me up the stairs and obviously lugs is a really important like interesting word because it's such a heavy and laid word i mean it just sounds very heavy as well so obviously she's physically now in a completely different state maybe all to do with her brain damage and the way she can't look after herself and the thing i like most actually with the images well you might have to come away with me on this one in a, in a, in a bit of a bit of a bit of a i hope you get it um or i hope i explain it properly should i say uh, here we've got the idea of a picture and obviously in this picture that she actually looks at herself and when she sees this bright girl obviously in the picture she's going to be still it's a freeze frame it's a freeze frame of joy it's a freeze frame of the hope she's going to have it's a free a freeze frame of all she could be and it's just kind of held there and now we've got this also freeze frame but this is a living freeze frame which is a really interesting contrast because she's grown into a freeze frame again but you're not supposed to be a freeze frame when you're older and the reason she's still a freeze frame is because she can't grow and develop because of her memory problems and because of her injury so she needs reminding every morning about you know who she is and what she's done you know where her life has taken her etc and that's you know it's really sad so she's stuck now in life whereas the other girl was only kind of stuck or held in a picture and and ironically when she was stuck and held in a picture it was held at this most captivating awesome moment and i guess you could actually be looking at uh, if you wanted to add another thing to mean exactly you know the power of pictures and what they do to us you know it's it's always interesting when people for example break up or something 
and you know they've got all the happy pictures etc and you know that hurts to take them down or rip them up or whatever but um you know you don't remember all the reasons in between there that you actually broke up with someone so that's that's a, a really interesting kind of angle a sub angle if you wanted to take take up on that as well so we move on then to the uh, language and we've got enmeshed which is a kind of a really nice way of just saying kind of comfortably trapped because you know it, even like with wire meshing it's not like tough like barbed wire or kind of very gritty like prison cells but even the mesh is kind of soft you are still trapped in it and obviously she's trapped in this fat now and the reference there is obviously perhaps to the little girl and also a reference to perhaps her, 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 more obviously sorry her physical condition she seems like obviously she's put on weight now and then she kind of the picture then taunts taunts her as she looks at herself delicate when she was younger um the language again of the third person when she says that she knows and i need reminding so it this person was able to deal with something very the young girl was able to deal with something you know very serious you know kind of forward herself and move on and grow and develop whereas she um she can't get by even just knowing about herself you know dealing with the loss of herself um without excuse me without you know without being uh saddened etc etc and obviously it's something share that um she'll never get over whereas the other person managed to get over the uh, sorry i keep on referring her younger self sorry managed to get over that so that's interesting as well um and then here this is i picked this one out just for language obviously you could pick out a hundred other things but um I, I really like the idea that this I hear this really short sentence consistency matters first of all because it was a short a sentence so we know it's very um, kind of punctuated and serious and then the kind of consistency and with consistency we get the idea of something being regular something being you know not changing something being a routine etc etc so again this kind of gives me more ideas than anything about the um, the nature of the sorry this patient nature of Alison you know she's kind of got her routines you know she has to have a medicine at a certain time she speaks to a therapist a therapist at a certain time she goes to certain places etc 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 which is you know it's 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 really when you think about it like that and uh, the writer of this you know she actually worked as a psychiatric nurse for a long time um and in fact that's where she started to write all her poetry and th that's why I think you know that just in those two words you know she would have seen this life inside out every day with patients like this and therefore you know she's just I think summed up that you know life day to day in in a hospital like that um very very well in that in that in those two words um and here we have the um excuse me here we move on then to the uh, effect on us you know what does it make us think about well it gives us a voice to people who are in care or people who have suffered dementia etc and you know just kind of like the regrets they have even though they might not be able to communicate with us as as often as they wish maybe due to certain amounts of m memory loss it's really important or really interesting that we actually get this voice you know just kind of looking back at maybe even just a snapshot of the kind of regret and the feeling that this person has it also makes us think about unfulfilled lives and how excuse me unfulfilled lives and how none of us really knows what's going to happen to us you know no one no one ever died uh, by being hit by a bus you know knowing that they were going to get hit by a bus that day and obviously or no one ever you know they're going to be injured or hurt or you know all the range of things that could actually happen so it gives us the idea about you know potential and possibilities and um, fulfilling your potential not fulfilling your potential as well and you could actually i suppose on the opposite of that say you know i mean is this on some levels you know in inspiring uh, in terms of you know you want to be or a person would want to be i'm just gonna add that there you want to be or you know you wouldn't want to be a person that ever looked back on their life and actually kind of had those regrets and you might just be sitting there a person might be sitting there you know reading something like this or thinking about something like this and really realizing how they would uh, want to make the most of the time they have and, and you know really fulfill their potential potential um and we've got the idea here i think as well is really important the the effect that has on us it makes us think about repetitive loss you know every single day this person is reminded of the life that they had and now that they don't have and that's just a horrible feeling to be waking up to to know and not know um every single day um yeah I think that's one of the most um, one of the most hard hitting things about this. Yeah, hopefully that was useful. Uh, I think there's one more to do in this um, section of the anthology, then we can move on to one of the other ones.